Hello trigonometry students, welcome to our class. My name is Jamie Amy. Uh, before you watch this video, please go to Canvas, click on Files, and open um, Chapters 1 through 8 Notes with Blanks. Now, um, you're going to want to print that document, four slides per, per page, double-sided, or download that document onto a device that you can annotate on. Either way, you're going to be uploading this document to Canvas with the blanks filled in in your own handwriting. So if you're annotating on a device or writing on a printed document, either way is fine, but you're going to want to do that before you continue watching this video. Um, and then after that, we'll watch the class videos while you fill in the blanks on your document and we'll stop frequently to do the homework questions in my lab and mastering. So if you haven't done that yet, please pause this video and go do that now. All right, let's get started. This right here is our official textbook of record. You do not have to purchase a hard copy of it. You do have to purchase um, access to My Lab and Mastering, which will include the ebook. My Lab and Mastering is also the website that we will do, that you will do your homework, take your test, and see your grade. Okay, first blanks to fill in right here. Chapter one geometry review, and trigonometric functions. All right, good news about this being recorded. You can pause it right now and take um, more time to fill in those blanks. You can rewind if you want to hear something again. Um, totally up to you. You can move at your speed. Okay, to start the study of trigonometry, we must talk about similar triangles which have two characteristics. Their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional. That means that their sides uh, all have equal ratios. Let's um, review this topic through a few examples. Okay, similarity statement here, red left to right is triangle ABC is similar to triangle NMP. We're asked to find the measure of angle B and the measure of angle C. All right, using the figure here, the measure of angle B is corresponding, or in the same location, as angle M. So since the measure of angle M is 31 degrees, the measure of angle B is also 31 degrees. Um, just a reminder, you also could have um, found that B and M were corresponding angles by the similarity statement right here. They're both the center letter, or uh, the geometric code they each have three arch marks, indicating that they are um, congruent and therefore have equal measure. All right, measure of angle C. C is corresponding with angle P. Angle P's measure is 104 degrees, therefore the measure of angle C is also 104 degrees. All right, so that is an example working with the first characteristic of similar triangles, which that is that their corresponding angles are congruent. This one here, similarity statement, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DFE. We're asked to find the unknown side lengths. So we're gonna use the second feature, which is that corresponding sides are proportional, um, which means that they have equal ratios. Okay, um, first unknown side length. Get my pen here. Let's find um, this one first, okay? This is in the location. Uh, same location as the 24. So those are called corresponding sides. And I'm gonna find two others that are in the same location or corresponding. The eight and the 16 are also corresponding, so in the same location. So the ratio of the 16 and the eight will be equal to the ratio of the 24 and the unknown side that we're looking for first. The way we um, translate that from this figure into an equation would be 8 is to 16 the same as df, that's that question mark side we're looking for, is to 24. And that's just one way to translate it. You could have gone the, um, with the reciprocals of each fraction if you wanted to. That would have been 16 is to 8, the same as 24 is to df. Either way is fine because once we solve a proportion for an unknown using the cross product, at this uh, point, uh, either way we'd get to the same uh, values. 
Okay, uh, divide both sides by 16 to isolate DF, and it turns out that that missing side length is 12 units. So I'm just uh, picking up on this ratio here, 16 units in the large triangle to eight in the smaller, 24 units in the larger triangle to 12 in the smaller. So we've got a two to one ratio going on here. For every two units in the large triangle, we have one unit, uh, linear unit in the um, small triangle. Uh, but let's write our proportion one more time just to find this um, last missing side right here. The 32 corresponds with this. So this is the one we're trying to find right now. So writing that as a proportion, I went with the eight over 16 again, and that uh, the eight is to 16, the same as this missing side EF is to 32 this time, because they're in corresponding locations. All right, cross multiply, isolate EF, and it turns out that this longest side of the triangle is 16 linear units, which holds true, two units in the large triangle equal one unit in the small triangle. Okay, similar triangles. When can this uh, feature or skill be used? Um, uh, for example, here, an engineering team needs the height of a flagpole. They know that the shadow of their office building is 18 meters long. At the same time, the shadow of the flagpole is 27 meters long. They also know that the building is 10 centimeters high. How do they find the height of the flagpole without measuring it themselves? Solution. We're going to construct uh, two similar triangles as shown. These triangles are similar because they've got 90 degree angles, so one matching angle, as well as the, um, we're measuring their shadows at the same time, uh, which means the angle of elevation to the sun is the same. So by angle, angle similarity, these two triangles are similar. Okay, what that means is we can write a proportion just like we did before. And the way I wrote mine is that the height of the flagpole is to the height of the building the same as the length of the shadow of the flagpole is to the length of the shadow of the building. I want you to write that down, have it as a quote here, because um, it it's, can be very valuable to read a proportion in this way. The height of the flagpole, that's the MN, is to the height of the building, that's the 10, the same as, that's the equal sign, the length of the flag, flagpole shadow, that's the 27, is to the length of the building shadow, that's the 18, okay? Once you get it from a figure into an equation, you just cross multiply, isolate your unknown, and it turns out that that flagpole is 15 meters high. Another situation, let's say um, you're going rock climbing, and before you climb a rock, you might wanna know the height of the cliff. You can um, place a mirror on the ground and walk backwards until you see the top of the cliff in the mirror. Use a tape measure to find the distance from your feet to the mirror and the distance from the mirror to the cliff. Uh, and you can use the tape measure to find your height if you don't know it. Okay, this is going to create two similar triangles as shown right here in the figure. This is your height distance from your feet to the mirror. The mirror is right here at point V, by the way. Okay, this is the mirror. And the distance from the mirror to the cliff is 34 feet. Height of the cliff is unknown. Okay, we can write a proportion just like before. Mine, I went with, your height is to the height of the cliff. So 5.5 and X many feet. Okay, those are paired up. The same as the distance from your feet to the mirror is to the distance from the mirror to the cliff. So that's why the 34 and the six are paired up. Once you get it from a figure to an equation, we just use our algebra skills by cross multiplying, dividing both sides by six, and it turns out that that cliff is about 31 feet high. So now before you go climb it, you can use that information as needed. Okay. Using what we know about similar triangles helps us understand the trigonometric ratios. I have found a video online um, that I think explains this very well, and um, so we're going to watch this together. Depending on where you are with your studies, chances are you've seen or heard of sine, cos, and tan. 
they are found as buttons on pretty much every scientific calculator in existence. They are incredibly important and useful in the world of mathematics. People often ask, where do they actually come from? I remember asking my teacher the same question in year 9, and that's what we'll be looking to find out in this video. To give us some idea of how they've come about, consider how pi is seen with circles. A long time ago, someone thought it would be a good idea to measure a circle's circumference, which is distance around the outside, and divide it by its diameter. Doing this for this circle, we get 3.141. Doing it again for this circle, we get 3.141. And the same again for this circle. And this will be true for every circle in the universe. This number that we always get is called pi, and that is how we came up with the formula to work out the circumference of a circle, pi times diameter. It turns out we can do something similar with right angle triangles. Now, let's look at this right angle triangle. The angle here is 60 degrees. I've measured sides which have lengths of 2, 1, and 1.732, and we can just assume it's centimeters. It's always a good idea to label the sides. I'm going to call this side H for hypotenuse because it's the longest side. This side O because it's opposite the angle 60, and this side A because it's adjacent to the angle. I'm going to do the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse just to see what I get. So it's 1.732 divided by 2, which is equal to 0 0.866. I'll just make a note of that and move on. I've got a, another larger right angle triangle now. The angle here is still 60 degrees, but I'm going to do the same thing. Label the sides as before and do the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So 5.196 divided by 6, and that's equal to 0 0.866 again. Interesting. Different triangle, but the same exact answer. Again, I've got a smaller right angle triangle now, still with an angle of 60 degrees. Doing the same as before, dividing the opposite side by the hypotenuse, I get 0 0.866 again. And yes, it turns out that for any right angle triangle in the universe with a 60 degree angle, if you measure the opposite side and divide it by the hypotenuse, you will always get 0 0.866. You can even try this yourself. Draw any right angle triangle with one of the other angles as 60 degrees. Then measure the side opposite the 60 degree angle and divide it by the hypotenuse and you will always get 0 0.866. It looks like I've just discovered something. So let me make this into an official theorem. And I can use my theorem to find missing sides when one of them is missing. I've got a right angle triangle here. The longest side they've given, which is five kilometers, but the side labeled X is missing. Let me label them like before. Well, I know from my theorem that the opposite side, which is X, divided by the hypotenuse five will be 0 0.866. And I can just use algebra or work backwards to find x. Something divided by 5 is 0 0.866, so it's 0 0.866 times 5, which is 4.33 kilometers. Going back to my theorem, I'm going to keep a record of this in a table because it will make my life easier when I need to find missing sites in the future. And I also plot my results on a graph because we like graphs and they help us notice patterns and such. So far, all the right angle triangles we've looked at had the other angle as 60 degrees. But as we know, those other angles in a right angle triangle won't always be 60. In this triangle with 60 degrees that we looked at already, let's look at the other angle. Well, angles in a triangle add up to 180, so I can just subtract 
the 60 and the 90 from 180 to give me 30 degrees. I'll label the sides as before. This time the opposite side is opposite the 30 degree angle. Now when I do the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, I get 0 0.5. And this will always be the same for all other right angle triangles with a 30 degree angle. I'm going to add this result to the table I started compiling. So when it's 30 degrees, the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse is always 0 0.5. I'll also add this result onto the graph I made as well. So back to my theorem with the 60 degree right angle triangle. Seems pretty good, pretty useful to help us solve problems. Unfortunately for me, someone has already made a theorem and far better presented than mine. What's taken me two lines of words can be said with one simple expression, the sine of 60, and that is equal to 0 0.866025 and so on. This is available on devices each and every one of you own. Type in sine 60 on your calculator and you get 0 0.866. Not only that, you get a much better and more accurate answer. You will notice I rounded my figures to three decimal places when I measured the triangles earlier, but theirs is far more accurately done than mine. We also looked at triangles which had a 30 degree angle and got 0 0.5. I also started compiling a table and I got up to 30 and 60 degrees. Again, unfortunately for me, someone has already made this table and has done a, a far better job with it. I just worked it out with two angles, but they've got values for all possible integer angles from 1 to 89. You might just be able to see the familiar value of 0 0.866 when it's 60 degrees and 0 0.5 when it's 30 degrees. And then the graph I started plotting if you do it for all the angles, you end up with a curve and this starts to form what we call the sine wave. Um, and this is used throughout maths and science. But what about cos and tan? Going back to the very first triangle we measured, we could have done the whole exercise by investigating what happens if we divided the adjacent side by the hypotenuse instead you'll find you always get 0 0.5 and writing cos of 60 says the same thing. Doing the exercise with the opposite side divided by the adjacent can be found with tan 60. This is why we teach these formulas in trigonometry to find missing angles or sides. Often using so ka toa to help students remember them. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. The word trigonometry is derived from ancient Greek and means three angle measurement or triangle measurement. And similar right triangles have equal ratios. Therefore, we call these the trigonometric ratios. Let triangle ABC be a right triangle with acute angle A. Notice the figure first, please. All the angles are labeled with the capitals and the side lengths are labeled with their uh, corresponding lowercase letter. Sine of angle A is equal to the length of the leg opposite angle A over the length of the hypotenuse. Uh, and in this figure here, that would be this length divided by the hypotenuse or A over C. Cosine of angle A is equal to the length of the leg adjacent to angle A over the length of the hypotenuse. So in this figure here, that would be this length right here divided by this length here, or B divided by C. And last one, tangent of angle A is equal to the length of the leg opposite angle A over the length of the leg adjacent to angle A. So in this figure, that would be this length right here divided by this length right here, or A divided by B. Okay, next example, solve the right triangle. That means find all three angle measures and all three side lengths. Okay, 
Um, to do this, I already can tell I'm going to need to use something more than the Pythagorean theorem, something more than special triangles, because this isn't a special triangle. Um, so I'm going to go to um, Sokotoa. Recall S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. If that is a nine letter uh, way to remember the three uh, trigonometric ratios that we're gonna use. I'm gonna show you these same nine letters here, just um, in the extended form. <laughs> okay, so Sokotoa is S-O-H. That means sine of one of the interior angles of the triangle, not the right angle, is equivalent to the length of the side opposite that angle theta divided by the length of that of uh, the side of the hypotenuse of the triangle see it's all that entire first uh, fraction right there or equation is abbreviated with soh uh, that's why people like to use sokoto it's it's helpful in remembering all of this in with just nine letters C-A-H, that is cosine of an angle theta inside the triangle, not the 90 degree angle, is equivalent to the length of the side adjacent to theta divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And the last one, T-O-A, that is short for tangent of an angle theta inside of the triangle, not the 90 degree angle, is equivalent to the length of the side opposite of theta divided by the length of the side adjacent to theta. Okay, so we're going to use that to find um, the missing parts of our triangle. Missing parts, well, let's go with the known parts. Known parts, uh, measure of angle A, it's 32 degrees. Length of uh, this side here, 15 yards. And this angle measure here, 90 degrees. So the ones we need to find are lowercase a, capital B, and lowercase c. Uh, it's your choice which one you want to go with first. I am going to choose um, lowercase a first. Okay, so to find lowercase a, I am going to set my theta right here as 32 degrees. I could have chose the other one. There's no wrong answer. But I know it's 32 degrees, so I'm just going to go with theta 32 degrees right now. Okay, um, my lowercase a, according to the theta that I selected, is considered the opposite side right over there i'm going to write the word opposite because i'm not ready to start writing my equation yet and i don't want to have to remember that so i write it down for myself okay um, i need one more side i can use the hypotenuse but i don't currently know its length and that would give me two unknowns in my equation we never want that we always want an equation with one unknown that's our goal otherwise we would need a second equation um, with the second unknown in it okay um so i'm going to choose uh, this side here since i know its length it's 15 yards according to the theta that i chose the uh, this side length right here is the um, adjacent side length if you, for, for whatever reason, chose this as your theta, um, you may have taken your calculator out and done 180 minus 90 minus 32 and obtained this angle measure first. That's totally fine. If you're using this as your theta, though, make sure you um, are using the 15 uh, in your equation as the opposite side length and the lowercase a for the adjacent, if that is where your theta is selected to be. Okay. All right, so now I need to, still not ready to write my um, algebraic equation yet, um, I need to choose which one of these three is going to be appropriate. According to the sides that I have from my angle theta, opposite and adjacent, I go up here to Sokotoa. Opposite and adjacent. Sine is out. That's opposite and hypotenuse. Uh, cosine is out. That's adjacent and hypotenuse. See the AH. Uh, tangent. That's the one dependent on opposite and adjacent side lengths of theta. So I'm going to use this right here. I'm going to take the unknowns here, which are theta, the numerator, and the denominator, and plug in what I can. It'll look like this. Um, I keep the TAN short for tangent. Theta is going to turn into a 32 degrees. I keep the equal sign. Keep the fraction bar. Numerator is the length of the opposite side of theta. That's my unknown little a. 
and denominator is length of the adjacent side to theta. So that's 15 yards. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. Let me show you. Here's um, the work to find lowercase a. TAN, short for tangent, always followed by the angle, 32 degrees, is equivalent to, and here's our ratio, lowercase a over 15. All right, once you have gone from a geometric figure into an algebraic equation like this, um, with one unknown, you just need to use your algebra skills to solve for that unknown. Don't let this uh, TAN throw you off. You know how to manipulate an equation to isolate the one unknown. Um, all right, on this side of the equation is our unknown uh, lowercase a. The only other thing on this side of the equation is this divided by 15. To get rid of a divided by 15, what do we do? Multiply by 15, inverse operations. So if we multiply both sides by 15, we have accomplished our goal, which was to isolate uh, the lowercase a, done. And this right here, this is called the exact value, 15 times tangent of 32 degrees. That's the, the exact value of a. If we were to ask to approximate it, like we are here, round to the nearest tenth, it would be at this point that we um, take out our calculators. Um, let's see if my TI-84 emulator was not working earlier. Let's see if it will work now. Yeah, okay, there it is. Okay, so we type in uh, from left to right, 1, 5, tangent, 32. I know I'm in degrees. It says it right here. And hit enter. And so that side length is approximately... Um, 9.4 yards. All right, let's look at the work to find lowercase c next. If we, my pen back, are going from angle A once again, then angle C, our hypotenuse, and the 15 degrees right there is our adjacent side. So we're going to pick one of these three to write our equation. We're working with the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. So uh, Sokotoa helps us again. Uh, sine is out because that's opposite and hypotenuse. Uh, cosine, that's the one we're going to use because that is adjacent and hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite and adjacent, so that one wouldn't work. So we're going to go to cosine right here and we're gonna turn this into our equation by turning the theta into 32 degrees again. The length of the side adjacent to that is our 15, and the length of the hypotenuse is our unknown c. As an equation, it looks like this. Cosine of 32 degrees equals 15 over lowercase c. Okay, uh, to solve this for C, we first need to get it out from being a division by C. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by C. Now we're at C times cosine of 32 degrees equals 15. So to isolate this lowercase c now, we need to get rid of this multiplied by cosine of 32 degrees. We do that using division. And now we've isolated lowercase c, so this would be the exact value or the exact length of the hypotenuse um, but we're being asked to round to the nearest tenth so take your calculators out again and uh, we're going to type this in left to right top to bottom so 1 5 division cosine 32 so 1 5 divided by cosine of 32 and we're still in degrees so we can go ahead and run it and it turns out that our hypotenuse is approximately 17.7 yards. Okay, um, last missing piece would be this uh, angle measure here, angle B. We could use one of these trigonomic uh, ratios to find angle B, but um, I think the triangle angle sum theorem would be uh, more straightforward, uh, so let's use that. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. That means that our interior angle measures of 90 right here, plus the 32 right here, plus our unknown right there, have to equal 180 degrees. 
Okay, on the left side here, I see that we can combine like terms. So now we've got 122 degrees plus the measure of angle B equals 180 degrees. To isolate the measure of angle B, we need to get rid of this addition of 122 degrees. We'll do that using subtraction. And that gives us the measure of angle B being 58 degrees. And what we have done is called uh, solving the right triangle. All right, so here is an example for you to try. I want you to um, solve the right triangle, round all of your answers to the nearest tenth. We've got um, a 40 degree angle interior here, 90 degree angle here, and the one side length we know is opposite of angle A this time, and it is eight miles. I went ahead and wrote Sokotel right here for you. Um, in case you're using that as a tool to help you remember uh, the three trigonomic ratios that we've studied so far. So I want you to please pause this video and solve the right triangle. All right, welcome back. Let's see how you did. One option to find lowercase b. This is the option I went with. There are other ways to find missing parts of this particular triangle. I used tangent of 40 degrees is equal to 8 over b. Multiplying both sides by b, then divide both sides by tangent of 40 degrees. I now have the um, exact length of that side of the triangle, but using uh, my calculator, I got approximately 9.5 miles one option to find the length of the hypotenuse. I used sine of 40 degrees is equal to eight over C. Multiply both sides by C and divide both sides by sine of 40 degrees. This is the exact length of our hypotenuse. Using our calculator, we get that the hypotenuse is approximately 12.4 miles. Last missing part for um, the order I uh, went about this is angle B. One option to find measure of angle B is the triangle angle sum theorem. 90 plus 40 plus the measure of angle B equals 180 degrees. Combine like terms, subtract 130 from each side of the equal sign, and measure of angle B equals 50 degrees. Okay, if you got the right answers, same as me, uh, but went in a different order or used a slightly different technique, um, as long as all your moves were legal and um, you didn't make any small mistakes, then um, great job. All right, in this example, we're being asked to find an angle of depression. And an angle of depression exists when you have a horizontal line, like we do in the dash with the dashed line here, and then the other side of the angle is below the horizon, that horizontal line of sight. So this right here is an angle of depression right there, uh, labeling it with the Greek letter theta. Okay, from the top of a 210 foot cliff, David observes a lighthouse that is 430 feet offshore. Find the angle of depression from the top of the cliff to the base of the lighthouse, round to the nearest degree. All right, so this angle of depression is outside of our triangle. So for the trigonomic functions, uh, it wouldn't work. However, we have um, a theorem that says any two parallel lines, so we're gonna use that horizontal line of sight as well as the horizon here. Any two parallel lines cut by a transversal, here's the transversal. Um, in that situation, alternate interior angles are congruent. So this angle right here, which I've labeled theta, is alternate interior to this one right here. So if this one is labeled theta, this one um, would also be the same measure as theta. So instead of going straight for this angle of depression, I'll go for this interior angle right here, and then the angle of depression will have the same measurement. Okay. So from, uh, let's look at this. We've got to choose our trig function to write Sokotoa, these nine letters, to help me out on my decision between sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, from this angle right here, 
the side lengths that I know are opposite of that angle in question, as well as adjacent to that angle in question. So I'm just gonna put O and A for opposite and adjacent. Just give me a super visual. Sine is out, that's opposite and hypotenuse. Cosine is out, that's adjacent and hypotenuse. Tangent is the trig function we're gonna wanna use this time. Tangent of our unknown angle is equivalent to the opposite side length over the adjacent side length. Writing that in an equation, it looks like this. Tangent of angle B, it's angle B, the one we're looking for right now, is equivalent to this ratio, the opposite side length over the adjacent side length. Okay, this is the first time in this class where we have um, to isolate the angle, which means separating it from this function right here, tangent. Okay, to separate tangent from your angle, you need to use the inverse operation. Tangent has an inverse operation called tangent inverse. It looks like this. Looks like a negative one exponent, but it's read tangent inverse, inverse tangent, or some people even read it, you'll see this later in the course, as arctan, okay? These two function, or this function right here, inverse tangent, undoes tangent. So if we take this tangent and we move it to the other side of the equal sign using its inverse operation, it looks like this. And we have accomplished what we wanted to, which was to isolate this capital B right here. Okay, so this is the exact value of that angle B, but we are asked to round to the nearest degree. So we'll pick up our calculators again. Okay, take your calculator out. Inverse tangent. Okay, inverse tangent, I'm trying to make this a little bigger for you, is the function written above the tangent key. So to um, implement the function written above a key, we have to hit second first. Second, okay. Now when we hit this tangent key, it will be opening the tangent inverse function. It's very similar to using shift on your keyboard if you want to use a command on the that is written on the top of a key of a keyboard, you usually hit shift. So same thing here, we've got second and then tangent, opening up the tangent inverse function for us. All right, we're gonna input this ratio, 210 over 430. Close it, we are in degrees and run it. And it outputs that our, the measure of angle B is approximately 26.029592192 and so on degrees. We're being asked around to the nearest degree, which would be a 26 degree angle of depression. All right, one more example, and then we're going to um, move to homework questions in my lab and mastering. All right, this one is using an angle of elevation. 123 feet from the base of a flagpole, the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole is 26 degrees, 40 minutes. Find the height of the flagpole to the nearest tenth. Okay, uh, let's just talk about this 26 degrees, 40 minutes for a second. It's just, it's um, somewhere between 26 degrees and 27 degrees. So it has a portion of a degree. The 26 degrees and 40 minutes. There are two forms to express an angle measure that is between two integers. One, you can express it as a decimal degree. Okay. First, you can express it as a decimal degree, um, but a second option is a degree, minutes, seconds form. One degree is equivalent to 60 minutes, and one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. Here's a nice example. 151 degrees, 
30 minutes and 30 seconds is the same as 151.55 degrees. This is in degrees minute seconds form and this is as a decimal. You can find these symbols in your calculator under angles. I'll show you where it's at um, through this example. All right, first thing though, we need to decide um, which trigonomic function is gonna help us out here. The angle that we know is here. The angle opposite of that is the one that we're looking for. And the angle adjacent to that is known. We don't wanna use the hypotenuse in this case because that would introduce another unknown. So we're looking for the trig function um, use that is opposite and adjacent. Okay, sine is out, cosine is out. Oh, this was supposed to be TOA. <laughs> Tangent is the one we want to use. Oh my goodness, I wrote this wrong. Let's rewrite this. <laughs> so, ka, TOA, T-O-A, I wrote tangent. Okay, um, sine is out, cosine is out, tangent is the function that's gonna help us. So we're gonna write tangent of this 26 degrees 40 minutes is equivalent to the opposite side length or the height of the flagpole divided by the adjacent side length or 123 feet. It looks like this. We'll need to get rid of this divided by 123. And we'll do that using multiplication of 123, both sides of the equal sign that accomplished our goal of isolating lowercase a. So this is the exact height of the flagpole, but we are being asked to round to the nearest tenth. So we're going to type this into the calculator. All right, take your calculator out and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so we're gonna start typing uh, from left to right. So we have one, two, three, tangent, two, six, and this is the first time that we actually have to say that's the whole amount of degrees followed by four zero minutes. Okay, to do that, find the key that says angle. It's right here on mine, it's above the key that says apps. So if I hit second, angle, I've got my degrees right here and my minutes right here. So to apply the degrees, I can hit the number one or I can hit enter since it's where um, it's highlighted. So I'll hit enter. Now keep typing left to right, four zero and the minute symbol. So again, second angle, second one now. So I'll hit the number two, close, run, and the height of that flagpole is approximately 61.77292175. We're being asked to round to the nearest tenth, so that would be 61.8, and let's see what our units are, feet. So the flagpole is approximately 61.8 feet tall. Okay, we're going to um, stop the lecture now, and we're going to uh, go to my lab and mastering and do homework questions number one through number 14. Okay. Thank you for being here. My name is Jamie Amy and I will see you next time.